Good afternoon, everybody. Sam Romeo here again, environmental educator at Allwood. And today for my Thursday afternoon video, I'm going to be talking about signs and tracks of insects and birds. Now, a lot of the birds that are migrating through right now are becoming insectivores. So that means, for example, bluebirds and cedar waxwings, even though they are kind of considered uh, year-round residents, their diet changes throughout the year. So in the fall and wintertime, they're eating a lot of berries, poison ivy, Virginia creeper berries. But now they're starting to eat a lot more insects. Um, so I'm going to talk about why native plants are so important because a lot of these insects feed on a lot of plants that are native to Ohio and that helps support the food chain further on for our birds. All right, so let's see what we can find. Here is a gallery which we're familiar to seeing. And the gallery is just the whole area and design that insects make. And this is a ash tree. So you can see there's the bark. It's almost completely coming off. See, just completely falls off. And this is all from the emerald ash borer, which we know pretty well. But the insect, which is a kind of a lime green jewel beetle, female lays its eggs in between the bark and then the larva bores underneath of course the emerald ash borer and feeds in between that bark and creates these these markings this gallery and when that bark pretty much gets peeled off the tree just starts to die here we have a another white ash tree but in this tree you can see some bigger holes in it. Right here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So these are made by woodpeckers. Um, this one down here is probably made by a pileated woodpecker just because it's rounder and a lot more oval shaped. While other ones are smaller ones like this. And this one could have been made by a hairy woodpecker, downy woodpecker. Um, pileated woodpeckers use their beak more like a chisel. So chiseling away at different angles and removing them while downy woodpeckers and hairy woodpeckers use it more like a drill going straight in. So their holes are a lot rounder. So this goes to show you that even though you may have dead trees on your property, um, leaving them up or at least trimming them like this one so they don't fall does create a habitat for insects and then therefore creates a food source for some of our native wildlife. Here we have another gallery. And this is on a black cherry tree. And this is actually made from a, a type of fly. So as compared to the emerald ash borer that bores, you know, in between the bark, which is the cambium, these guys are actually mining the sapwood of the tree. So where the sap runs up and down, you may, you know, know of it when learning about sugar maples. But sometimes you can find some unbelievable patterns in some of these bug galleries. Now here is a perfect example of a hole left by a pileated woodpecker. So pileated woodpeckers usually make them in an oval shape. This one's starting to heal a little bit. But pileated woodpeckers, um, like I said before, use their beaks much like a chisel. And they only feed on lower portions of trees, um, especially on down trees. So if you're ever on a hike or something and you flush out a pileated woodpecker that seems like it was just sitting on the ground, what they're actually feeding on are carpenter ants. So a lot of those down trees that are laying on the uh, surface of the forest floor, all right, especially during the winter time, you know, they get filled up with carpenter ants and they start feeding on the wooden side. Well, pileated woodpeckers find those fallen logs to feed on all those carpenter ants. So you ever see a big hole like this, usually oval shape, it is left by a pileated woodpecker, okay? And then some other ones, like these smaller ones are usually left by downy woodpeckers or hairy woodpeckers. So once again, uh, this is a black cherry tree, which is probably infested with a lot of bugs. Uh, maybe some of those aphids like the gallery that I showed you. But leaving these up like this is a great food source for a lot of our woodpeckers and other birds. Okay, the next cool thing I found was some walnut galls. And that is spelled G-A-L-L. -L. So what pretty much happens with these, and you can find these on all different types of plants, um, you know, everything from jewelweed and goldenrod to, you know, some cottonwoods and walnuts just like this. But what essentially happens is 
an insect either feeds, um, you know, or disrupts the growth of the cells, you know, in some way, and this plant just kind of compensates by growing more. Um, and these are essentially egg sacs. And this is an egg sac of a type of mite. And what it does is we'll eventually kind of grow, and then once it stops feeding, we'll kind of make it way out. You can kind of see there's a little hole coming out of there. And these will change color. This one's starting to get a little bit of color to it. Um, they'll start to become a pinkish white to a darker red. Um, but I wanted to talk about this because if you do have walnut on your property, this is actually one of the uh, few galls that I know of uh, that does not disrupt the, uh, the vascular flow of the leaf. So you don't really have too much to worry about, um, you know, your tree dying or anything like that. It will still, you know, do pretty well, but you could remove it if you wanted to. And once again, uh, this is created by a type of mite. Now here we have a different type of gall. So you can see these little bumps in the leaf. And sometimes it even causes the leaf to be a little distorted like that. And these are actually called velvet galls. And they can grow this little velvet. And these are also created by a type of mite. So if you ever see little bumps on your leaves, sometimes you can see them on maple leaves especially. This is from a type of mite or insect. Another gall I have found, and this is on an elm leaf, which is made by an aphid. And these are called pronounced finger-like galls. So you can actually see the gall, the egg sac, is actually growing up away from the leaf. And once again, that is made by a type of aphid. Laying its egg in there and causing the leaf to grow extra extra cells and kind of push its way out. So mites and midges actually might create galls like this, which are swollen bud galls. You know, the plant isn't really grown properly. You can kind of see the flowers kind of tucked in there still. Some leaves are kind of wrapped around it. But once again, that is a swollen bud gall. And here's kind of another one. Last thing I want to talk about with some insect signs on leaves. So we have three different kinds of leaves here that have been eaten by three different kinds of insects, or I guess family of insects. So one here we have something, uh, you know, that we call saw flies uh, that will actually cut out portions of the leaf eating in between. Um, you know, they could be beetles, they could be flies, they could be bees. Um, then we have types of beetles that make little holes kind of bitten in between like this and then we have some leaf edge cutters that actually will eat the end of a leaf off and those could be anything from caterpillars um, you know ants leaf cutter ants if you will so if you ever see signs on your plants like this sometimes you'll see leaves that actually still have the lattice in between it almost looks like a bug just kind of peeled back the uh, green portion of it and it's only left with these little tiny strings back there um, those are you know, signs of different types of buds. And then we have all different, you know, ones that make these different patterns in their leaves. So if you ever see these, maybe around your garden, in your house or something, um, these are in fact actually left behind by insects. So here we have a sign of a spittle bug. Yes, a spittle bug. And that does indeed look like spit, right? A little bubble frothiness. So there are numerous types of spittle bugs, um, and they feed on a wide range of plants. Um, but what they do is once they're feeding um, in early April, May, and early June, um, they create these little spittle areas to help protect them from predators and to help keep them from actually from drying out. But they feed on the younger uh, leaves that are coming out of a plant. So. That's why they usually feed the most in springtime because a lot of plants are starting to leaf out. And these are very common. Once again, that is called a spittle bug. Now here on the side of our nature center is the egg sac of a Carolina mantis. So a lot of the other praying mantis egg sacs you might see might be the Chinese variety, um, but this Carolina mantis egg sac is actually a native to North American uh, praying mantis. It is a smallest uh, brown praying mantis that you might see, but this is in fact their egg sac. Um, but the females lay these, uh, they kind of create a light frothy area and kind of build this on their own. Um, it's not built 
you know, internally, uh, such as say cockroaches or something, but um, up to about, you know, a couple hundred nymphs may emerge from this at once. And it's kind of hard to tell if the egg sac has, you know, already hatched or not, but you might see little tassels of uh, silk coming out of them that the nymphs kind of hang on to, but they all hatch at once. So this has already hatched, and when it did hatch, um, it was a few years ago, I just remember this was the spot, but there were literally hundreds of praying mantises all over this one area. So I was out walking just to the prairie, heading back to the center, and I know this really doesn't have anything to do with my thing, but look who we found. Found a nice little box turtle out here sunning. We'll go ahead and leave them be now right in the middle of the trail. Well, I wanna thank you all for watching this week. Remember, when you support native plants and native pollinators, you're also supporting our native birds. All right, so when you're leaving those old trees up that seem like they're rotting, but they're actually filled with insects and materials for insects to make more nests and lay more eggs, you're also supporting all the other wildlife in our area. So I wanna thank you again for watching. Have a great week. Again, this is Sam Romeo.